The focus now turns on to the hunt for Colonel Gaddafi. Uh, the rebels believe variously that he could be in tunnels under his compound. He could have fled to the city of Sirte, his hometown. He could be in the city uh, of Saba. The hunt now goes on. Joining me to discuss this, Colonel Richard Kemp, former member of the Joint Intelligence Committee who commanded British troops in Afghanistan. Hello to you, Richard. Hi. Nabila Ram Ramdani is a journalist and specialist on Middle East affairs. Hello, Nabila. Hello, good evening. Uh, and also joining us shortly, Robert Hunter, former US Ambassador to NATO and Chief of Middle East Affairs under President Carter, and he's with us now. Hello, Robert. Good to be with you. Uh, good to speak to you. Uh, Colonel Kemp, first of all, the Daily Telegraph tomorrow leads with the headline, SAS leads hunt for Gaddafi. Is that feasible? I think it's quite likely we've got special forces on the ground in Afghanistan who are assisting the rebels. I think it's improbable that the rebels managed to succeed to the extent they did their spectacular entry into Tripoli without planning assistance and various other forms of support, including coordination of air support with um, NATO advisers, at least. And I think it, it's highly likely they will be on the ground. And I've no doubt also that um, NATO forces, including perhaps British forces, will be providing assistance in gaining intelligence, particularly signals intelligence, to try and track Gaddafi and his fighters down. Yeah, I mean, like yesterday the British government were at pains to say there would be no British troops on the ground in Libya, so this would would fly in the face of that. And wouldn't it also fly in the face of the of the remit of the mandate, rather than just protecting civilian, uh, civilians? This looks now as though we're helping uh, the rebels to go on the offensive. Well, we've been doing that for some time, of course. I think, you know, exa exactly how you interpret the mandate. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a, an international lawyer, but I, what I do know is that, in effect, the NATO air forces have been acting as the air force of the rebels in um, d dealing with Gaddafi's forces. And, that, you know, whether that's within the mandate or whether it isn't, that's what's happening. And I think um, for us to continue assisting them with, with limited special forces, perhaps limited um, intelligence officers and other advisers on the ground there, helping to plan from Benghazi, helping to plan in Tripoli as well. I think it's 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 a good thing. I don't I wouldn't like to see it expanded into being, you know, a, a, a visible and overt um, NATO military presence on the ground in Afghanistan. But I think the kind of covert presence we've got there, low profile, but helping giving the rebels an advantage uh, is is necessary. And when you've got air power working in support of forces on the ground, you've got to have experienced people who can coordinate air support and talk on the radio to the to the aircraft. OK. Uh, Nabila Ramdani, and we hear today of a reward of a million dollars uh, posted by two Libyan businessmen in Benghazi for, for the capture of Colonel Gaddafi dead or alive. Does it particularly matter to the people of Libya whether he is dead or alive? Well, I think it matters immensely to uh, capture him uh, in any shape or form. Uh, we are talking about, you know, a population uh, which has been uh, suffering from Gaddafi's uh, crimes and indeed abuse of human rights for over 40 years now. So there's an awful lot of hatred directed towards Gaddafi and there's a strong sense of revenge. Um, but it seems um, a bit staggering that the NTC, uh, who, which uh, presents itself as, you know, a, a, an entity, the legitimate face of the um, Libyan regime now, um, and intent on uh, allegedly following, you know, democratic principles and the, and the rule of law, um, is actually um, issuing this, um, um, <clears throat> um, putting uh, out, sorry, this um, <clears throat> reward to uh, take out uh, Gaddafi, uh, as it were. Well, uh, yeah, Nabil, I think the reward itself has been put out by two Libyan businessmen. The NTC, their offer was for amnesty um, uh, for, 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 to somebody within Gaddafi's inner circle who gave information leading to his arrest, so it's slightly different. Yeah, if anything, it buttresses the uh, the, the appeal uh, to uh, to Gaddafi's inner circle, uh, people who effectively have blood on their hands to uh, take Gaddafi out. So uh, we, we're talking about the same thing, really. And uh, it throws uh, serious doubts about uh, the National Transitional Council's ability, as I said, to implement uh, democratic principles and uh, follow, uh, you know, the rule of, of law and, and, and justice and due process. Uh, so in that respect, it's, you know, it's a bit, um, well, what, what should the NTC have done? Well, I think, you know, uh, the, the uh, 
the, the, the clear need to uh, capture Gaddafi, I don't think there will be a, a possibility of a res restoring law and order in Libya and a stable environment and indeed unity between the Libyan people, which is um, ultimately, you know, the, the, the goal uh, that needs to be achieved uh, as soon as possible, unless, um, you know, there is uh, some sort of closure to this uh, horrible uh, saga uh, in Libya and this horrible Libya uh, campaign. And, and that means for the Libyan people that uh, Gaddafi uh, is found and Gaddafi is held accountable for his crimes. Okay. Uh, Robert Hunter, former US ambassador to NATO, I was talking to Colonel Kemp a moment ago about the fact that certainly the Daily Telegraph, and amongst other newspapers, the Sun newspaper yesterday claimed that the SAS, the British SAS, were leading the hunt for Gaddafi. How does that blur the line about this NATO mandate? Because there have been many critics who say NATO's gone, uh, not, not least China and Russia, that NATO's gone far beyond its remit of just protecting civilians. This will be another example, wouldn't it? Well, as you folks in Britain would say with Horatio Lord Nelson, uh, you can turn a blind eye to a uh, resolution like that uh, and you can, uh, you can stretch it uh, to mix a metaphor to the breaking point. I don't think there's any question that NATO has been doing more than just protecting uh, civilians, but uh, among the people who have most at stake, both within uh, uh, Libya, in the immediate region, and in Europe, I don't see anybody who's complaining about that. Uh, in fact, this seems to be a very effective merging of different kinds of uh, uh, military power and intelligence and the like in a way to bring down a very unseemly regime and a very un mm. unseemly character. Uh, and, and, uh, and, re and, and representatives of the National Transitional Council have been meeting in Qatar with uh, so-called Friends uh, of Libya. At which point, Robert, does the West have to consider withdrawing from this situation? Well, the important thing, there are a lot of important things. One is that the Libyan people, whoever they may be and whoever can put something together, uh, needs to be out in front of this. If it looked to be like it was just an effort to go back to the way it was with King Idris or or just a grab for oil or contracts, uh, I'm afraid uh, the chances of the Libyans putting something together where there will be uh, the Western interests fulfilled uh, are going to go a glimmering. Mm. Uh, and, and of course we've discussed this issue of the hunt for Colonel Gaddafi. Colonel Kemp, going back to you, where, where, where do they start? Where do the Libyans start in this, in this um, effort to find him? Of course Saddam Hussein evaded capture, didn't he, for, for around eight months? Saddam Hussein did, and I think um, Colonel Gaddafi, if he chose to do so, could probably evade capture for a long time as well. I think it's important that they get their hands on Gaddafi, um, as we've already heard this evening, to bring closure to events that have been taking place in Libya um, you know he whether how long the how fierce and ferocious the fighting is um, we can't say but while Gaddafi is at large I think we can expect uh, possibly the continuation of some resistance to the rebels for some time so he doesn't need to be collared and I think the way you know the way it can be done is is through a combined use of informants on the ground and there will be people who know where he is there'll be people who um, hopefully you know hopefully people wor who working for him now who can be persuaded to to give him up mm. and that's obviously one of the the best ways and also of course as I mentioned earlier signals intelligence in intercepting telephone conversations intercepting radio conversations which um, NATO many NATO countries are extremely adept at um, which could possibly yield some very good locational information on him yeah well certainly uh, the Americans tonight have said they've got no evidence at all to say that he's he's left Libya. Um, Nabila Ramdani, um, how important is it for the country now that the, that the NTC take control of the situation? We hear tonight that they were due to fly in today from Benghazi, the leaders, to try and take control, but because of the continued fighting in Tripoli, they're delaying that for at least a week. How, how difficult is that going to make the situation for, for, for Libya to go forward? Well, I mean, we've heard, uh, you know, a very... Um uh, moving but absolutely dreadful, you know, description of the uh, situation on the ground by the doctor you had online earlier on, uh, Moez, who, um, you know, depicted a very, very bleak uh, picture indeed of what's mm. going on on the ground. The situation is very volatile and there's, if anything, an escalation of, you know, a infighting between uh, rebel forces and, and indeed snipers and, and loyalists uh, to Gaddafi. Isn't that the danger here, Nabila, that people are looking for a simple solution and as you point out, Moyes was talking there about truckfuls of bodies arriving at makesh makeshift hospitals. This this isn't going to be over soon, is it? And then the NTC have been over optimistic by saying that that, that that certainly by tomorrow they want to be in Tripoli, but next week might be over optimistic as well. 
Well, absolutely. I think the NTC, but more crucially NATO, uh, should take responsibility for the current situation uh, because it has been, you know, the uh, force providing, you know, all the air power, but also, uh, as we know, all sorts of uh, tactical and logistical support, including armed supplies. And, uh, of course, the rebels were able to get hold of even more of uh, those supplies uh, from uh, Gaddafi's com compound uh, more recently. And it's another example, I'm afraid to say, of Western air power power intensifying a war without providing a sensible um, outcome uh, to this conflict and we have to bear in mind you know the horrific things that are going on summary ex ex executions looting uh, hospitals uh, uh, you know um, which cannot cope with the number of, of casualties mm. and, and 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 we um, um, you know, the, 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 yeah. it's, just, the, it's just that the situation is uh, seems to be veering uh, towards anarchy, and yeah. we're dealing with heavily armed young men who are uh, driven by hatred and revenge, and have been part of a loose military for, formation for the last six months. But of course, the, 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 yeah, but the National Traditional Council have been urging uh, the troops not to take revenge, haven't they? They've been saying to, to, try, to try and exercise some self control. How can you possibly, you know, how can uh, the uh, NTC can have uh, have any? Uh, any bearing on the situation of the world? How can they convince, you know, masses, thousands and thousands of young people driven by utter hatred yeah. and, and desperate okay. uh, to uh, bring about change to drop their guns when Gaddafi's is still around and is a potential threat still? Robert Hunter, this is and a huge... Why, go on, go on, sorry. Sorry, sorry Colonel I was going to say... Sorry, I was just going to say that's why we, we... You know, perhaps I, I understand the need for the, the emerging government of Libya to... To be um, to be humanitarian, to be democratically accountable, not to become a kind of despotic regime like Gaddafi. But we do need to be slightly careful about saying contradictory things and saying that we we must have due process where where Colonel Gaddafi is captured and brought to court and tried. We can't have him um, brought back and, and killed and the, the reward claimed for someone who's been killed. I think I think it's it, you know the, the most important thing is that Gaddafi is neutralised in one way or another because if not. The fighting is going to go on for a long time, and a lot more people than Gaddafi are going to be killed who don't need to be killed. No, if I disagree. Gaddafi's captured. I, I have to disagree strongly with that because it reflects badly on the NTC and its uh, intentions to be a democratic government. Otherwise, you know, the NTC is just a substitute for Gaddafi's regime. And in, as a matter of fact, the leadership of the NTC is is made up with Gaddafi's former henchmen. So the the I think the. Uh, the, 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 the crux of the matter here is not to substitute a very nasty despotic regime by another similar mm. one. Okay, Robert Hunter, p possible parallels here then to what happened in Iraq where the international community have, sa have said subsequent to that conflict that there wasn't enough planning for the future. How, how, how do you think that the international community will have changed their outlook now with regards to Libya? Have they given enough thought to what's going to happen uh, now that Gaddafi's gone? Well, I don't see a parallel with Iraq because uh, there really are no Western forces that are actually uh, dominating uh, uh, the country. Uh, I do believe there is going to be a lot of score settling. It's going to be very messy. A lot more people are going to get killed. Uh, and we'll be very lucky uh, if indeed this sorts itself out in a way that is, uh, uh, that is uh, hopeful any time uh, soon. But the outside world, and I mean the United States and the Europeans, have to understand that given what has been happening in North Africa, uh, first in Tunisia, then in Egypt, and now in Libya, uh, we are going to have to be engaged there one way or another, and that means a lot of money, among other things, and advice if it's asked for, and other kinds of support for as far ahead as we can see. But one of the things I hope we've learned from Afghanistan, Iraq, and, and a lot of other things is uh, the less we are seen, the less we are, are are in the center of things, the less we're trying to run things, the more likely it is that there could be could be some kind of success in the future. Okay, Robert Hunter, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Colonel Kemp, the last word to you on this hunt for Colonel Gaddafi, difficult question, $64 million question to be fair. Where would you start the search for him? Many people still think he's, he's in some kind of underground tunnel beneath his bunker. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't even like to, um, to, to put a penny on where he is. I think it's, it's certainly possible he could well be in Tripoli. Still, he might have taken to the hills. He could be anywhere. I think one thing we have to recognise about Colonel Gaddafi is that he is an extremely volatile and unpredictable man. What he does, um, no one can tell. I think, above all, the most important thing is that he is stopped from doing it and stopped from um, having fighters that rally to him. OK. Colonel Richard Kemp, thank you very much indeed. Nabila Ramdani as well. And Robert Hunter, thanks very much uh, for joining us. You're listening to Tony Livesey on Five Live. Lots more from Libya throughout the programme.